Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads. And today I have a recommendation collab for you for fantasies featuring just a dash of romance. I recently got this comment on one of my videos asking me to do a collab for fantasies with a minor romance subplot or just a dash of romance. And I would have loved to do a dedicated recommendation video sharing with you like five plus books that I could recommend. Unfortunately, I don't read enough fantasies with a minor romance subplot. Most of the fantasies I read have major romance subplots. I reached out to some of my favorite booktubers, asked them for their recommendations, and here they are to share it with you. Who wants to go first? Anyone? Any Issa, take it away. He asked me to recommend a fantasy book that has a dash of romance and I cannot think of any other better option than The Elements of Cadence by Rebecca Ross with first book A River Enchanted. This is a duology, it's concluded and it's wonderful. It not only has a beautiful storytelling and the prose is just so magnificent. I really wanted to read this in one day but above that it follows adult characters mainly for and there's a story that needs to be unraveled we get this isle in Scotland that it's divided by two. In one day, girls start to disappear and one of our characters will need to come back and start to resolve this crime. The magic here, it's beautiful. We'll get to see these different spirits coming around and also one of these characters is able to perform magic via music. The romance is more of a slow burn. It's more of understanding the love of moving characters, of advancing mature characters. It's so wonderful and it is perfect world building, great characters, amazing arc, and all in all, a beautiful story that I hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Jack from the booktube channel, Jack and the Book Stack. And when I was asked for a fantasy book with a subplot of romance, there's one book that came to mind first. And I'm sure it's not a super unique pick, but this is still just the best recommendation. I am talking about Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Warbreaker features a super unique magic system with colors and breath that gives people certain abilities. In this, we follow many characters. We have a god who is new to the position, super sarcastic and fun to read about. We have a fighter character that has a talking sword, also very sarcastic and a fun perspective. And we have two sisters. They are princesses, and the king needs to fulfill a treaty by giving one of them to a god king for marriage. So the romance is really featured in the POV of the sister that goes to marry this god king. And admittedly, her story is mostly around this romance. It's around this arranged marriage that she finds herself in. But she's only one of the POVs. And what I like about her romance is that it's not love at first sight. It's not attraction or lust at first sight. It really builds over time because she is unprepared to be in this situation. It's very different than what she expected. She's very scared, very nervous because this god king has a fierce reputation. And they end up building a friendship that grows over time. And that's something that I don't find in heavy romanticy books, it's usually lust at first sight and physical attraction right away. And the focus of the plot is a will they, won't they tension that's going on. And this one is quieter and slower and kinder over time because the plot is focusing on the overall situation, what's going on with the magic, what's going on with the politics, what's going on with this impending war. So it's not a love-centered story. It really is the subplot, but I do think it adds a lot to this overall story. So Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson is my recommendation to you for a fantasy book with a subplot of romance. Hey, it's Laura from the channel of Book Circus, and I am here today to give you a recommendation of a fantasy book with a little dash of romance. And while I had a lot of books that I could choose to recommend, 
I had to go with this one, which I feel is like one of the best examples and a book that I honestly don't get to talk about enough. This is Black Sun by Rebecca Roan Horse. One of the most unique fantasy world and settings that I've ever come across. This is inspired by the pre-Columbian Americas. And in this story, we are following a celestial prophecy that says a god will return when the earth and sky converge under the black sun. So we have this countdown ele element to this major celestial event, this eclipse, where God is supposed to rise and lead their people. It's filled with portent and prophecy and political intrigue and destiny. And of course, there's also a romantic subplot. This is probably, even though the romance definitely takes a huge backseat to the fantasy itself, this is one of my favorite romances of all time. We have Shiala, who is a sea captain who has the ability to calm the waves with her voice for reasons. And then we have a man named Serapio, who is this prophesized god reborn. As he is on his way to fulfill his destiny, he gets aboard Shiala's ship. And Shiala and Serapio spend a lot of time together and feelings develop. And it honestly is one of the most beautiful swoon-worthy romances you will ever find outside of an actual romance novel or a fantasy romance. This book just has so much going for it besides the romance, the political intrigue, war, prophecy, magic that is so incredibly unique and interesting the way it works in this world, and a time period and culture that is something that we don't get to see a lot of in typical fantasy that we read. So highly recommend Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. It is one of my absolute favorites. Hello, my name is Kristen from the channel Kristen Craves Books. And as soon as Becky asked me to recommend a book that is mostly fantasy with a dash of romance, I knew I was gonna talk about Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler. Friends, I'm Covers with Cassidy and thank you so much to Becky for asking me to be a part of this collab. I definitely like my romanticy, but when it comes to my fantasy, I definitely like it to have a little bit of romance and not a lot of romance. So this was the perfect time for me to shout about one of my favorite series. The Burning Blade and Silver Eye trilogy by Django Wexler. The first book is Ashes of the Sun. I looked through my shelves, but this is the winner. It is the one that came to my mind first. It's one of my favorites. It's actually fantasy sci-fi, so if that is something you're looking for, pick this up. It's so good. This follows two siblings. Each sibling does have a dash of romance in it, just a dash. But the main storyline of this follows the siblings and the sibling dynamic and the sibling relationship, as well as the plot of the actual story. The relationships are just in the background. In this, we follow Maya and Geyer, who are two siblings who are separated when they're quite young. At five years old, Maya gets sick and the empire comes and takes her away in order to heal her. Maya then grows up within the empire, being indoctrinated into their way, and Geyer hates the empire for taking his family away from him, and he grows up in the rebellion trying to take the empire down. And at some point they are definitely going to cross paths again. And we get both of their POVs and they both have romances, but in the sister's POV, it's the same romance throughout the book. It's very slow burn. It's a sapphic romance. It starts off really sweet. And then we see how they have this really strong friendship that becomes something more and the feelings they have for each other and first time love and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of politics involved, a lot of fantasy elements, a lot of sci-fi elements. It obviously has that Star Wars thing going for it. I hope that if you pick this up, you love it just as much as I do. I don't think you can do better than reading Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler. Hi, my name is Whitney from the channel Tipperous Den. I'm very happy to be part of this video. Um, I have three suggestions for fantasy where romance is kind of on the back burner. It's not very prevalent. I couldn't decide, so I went with all three because they're very, very different. The first one is a YA more magical realism than true fantasy, and that is The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. And so in this one, you have a prison healer. There's a rebel queen that ends up at this prison, and the prison healer is tasked with keeping this queen alive so she can face these elemental trials, but she's very sick, so the healer ends up taking her place. Um, there is the potential for a romance throughout the book, but nothing really progresses until the end of the book. I don't know. This is the first in the series. I haven't read the rest of the series, so I don't know how prevalent the rom romance is in the rest of the series, but this first one it is very much on the back burner. It's just kind of that potential 
really, really enjoyed this one. The next one is more of a cozy fantasy, and that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This is just a fun, light, cozy, uh, and I absolutely loved it. With this one, you have Emily, and she's kind of a scholar, and she's creating this encyclopedia of fairies, but there's this fairy type that she goes um, to study because she doesn't know a whole lot about it. Her potential love interest is somebody else from, like, the university and such, and again, nothing really progresses till the end. It's just kind of that potential, and the banner between the two characters is really, really great, so I really love that one. And then the last one, if you're looking for more classic fantasy, I would recommend The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This one, the romance is probably more prevalent in this one than the others I recommended. The East, I believe, is the ones that they like dragons. They have, like, more like water dragons and such and the west hates dragons because there was this dragon who basically caused a lot of chaos and destruction and he's about to rise again so all these forces are having to come together and work together to kind of stop him uh and yeah like i said there is more romance but it's more on the back burner like the plot of the story is definitely in the forefront and that is it from me. Those are the three books I recommend. I hope if you do read any of them that you enjoy them. Hi everyone, this is Coffee with Katie coming at you from the end of my work day. Becky kindly asked me to contribute in this collab video and so I wanted to share with you a fantasy book that I really really love um, but it only has a minor minor romance subplot but that's not the main point of the book. And I'm shockingly going to be sharing an urban fantasy book with you today because I think this book does not get enough hype for one. But the second thing is that I've really, really enjoyed this book and I haven't talked about it on my channel a lot. So I wanted to recommend it because I really did love it. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars when I read it and it was kind of my thing, but we'll get into it. So the book that I would recommend for this would be We Could Be Villains by Megan McLeod. This is a urban fantasy book, as I said. This is more of the superhero genre. You're following Rosemary, who is an ordinary girl, and she's living an ordinary life. She is a huge fan of the Vigil and Anti movies, which is basically like the Marvel universe in our world. There's just so many movies, and you just get really into it with all of the, the different movies and how they tie into each other and all the different characters. And she's super, super into it and the biggest fangirl ever. But then one day she starts to wonder if these are real instead of imaginary movie magic type situations when she thinks that her favorite villain from one of the movies is stalking her. There are mystery elements, there's the superhuman ability elements with the superheroes because actually all of the situations are real and the government is just using film to cover these this up as a real thing and they're saying it's movie magic to explain it away and made these superheroes like actors etc which is a really really interesting premise so she gets stalked by this super villain ironfall and he blackmails her threatens her and says that if she doesn't help him take over the world he will kill her family and so she ends up getting wrapped into this whole situation where she's trying to kind of play double agent she's trying to spy she's trying to keep her family safe but she's also uncovering a lot of nefarious plots and shady government things, while also maybe potentially falling for the villain. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would highly recommend you check it out. I really enjoyed this book and she is working on book two now. Thank you so much, Becky. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you for wanting to participate, Katie, as well as everybody else who gave me recommendations to use for this video. It took me a while to think of a fantasy that I loved with just a dash of romance. I had a few, very few, <laughs> but the one I ended up selecting to share with you is The Lights of Prague by Nicole Jarvis. This is a historical fantasy. It is set in Prague. It has to do with vampires, will-o'-the-wisps, witches, things like that. We're following a young man named Domek who is a lamplighter by night and a vampire hunter by day. And vampires are taking over the city of Prague. So he is trying to eliminate this threat, but he ends up actually falling in love with a woman who is a vampire, unbeknownst to him. 
And in finding out this secret, it leads him to discovering that vampires may not be the worst thing that's going on in Prague. And it leads him to discovering there are some sinister things to do with stealing the souls of witches. And it was just such an atmosphere read. I highly suggest if you're interested in this to check out the audio because the audiobook was so well done. And this is one that I don't talk about enough, but I think if you are looking for a historical fantasy with just a dash of romance, you should give this one a try. So I hope those recommendations were what you were looking for. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite fantasy with just a dash of romance. And thank you once again to my fellow booktubers for participating in this collab. I will have all of their channels tagged down below as well, so if you're not following them, be sure to do so. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and until my next video, go read a fantasy with just a dash of romance. Bye!